Good evening, everyone. Okay, so before we start uh, uh, the introductions, uh, let me just get the crowd a little active or live. Uh, so a quick question, how many of you are game developers or app developers over here? Can I see their hands? Wow, good to see so many people at five. And uh, how many of you did uh, an in-app purchase this week? One. One more? Two. Why? Why the balance have not done any in-app purchase? So, let's understand how can you make money and uh, using advertising because it's one of the key thing to make money in uh, this part of the world. But before that, let's do some introductions. Uh, I will let the panelists do their own introduction, but I represent Pocket, which is a reward video advertising platform focused in Southeast Asia and India. Hi, everyone. I am developer's best friend. You can say I'm Farheen. I represent Mofox uh, for the complete APAC region. Mofox helps app developers to monetize their apps using different DSPs and ad networks together, uh, which can give you a very high fill rate and easy PMs together. Uh, yeah, this is from my side. Sean? Hi, everyone. My name is Sean. I represent a company called Vungle. Uh, we're an in-app video uh, advertising network. We ex focus exclusively on video, uh, uh, support iOS, Android, and Windows. Uh, and uh, we work with, uh, with apps to advertise as well as to monetize uh, apps. And uh, as far as the monetization side goes, we work with um, a blend of, uh, of all sorts of advertisers, uh, CPM ads through our Vungle Exchange, uh, that's our programmatic side of our business, uh, as well as, uh, as performance advertisers uh, on the app side um, to provide you, you know, the best monetization opportunities uh, you can get. Hi, my name is uh, Guillaume Sachet. I'm head of strategic planning for MediaCorp. Uh, MediaCorp is uh, one of the two big media companies in Singapore. We have uh, traditional media like TV, radio, print. We also have more and more digital and mobile. Uh, I'm looking after strategy investment as well as uh, our incubator, where we obviously have a lot of uh, mobile uh, startups. Uh, I'm also on the board of a game publisher uh, in the region, Kubinet. Okay, before uh, Manish, uh, I think you said two words which are very interesting. Incubator and investment. Now, I'm sure a lot of developers out here would like to know more about the incubator and what kind of investment that you, you guys do. Uh, can I ask that in this, in this session? It's, I'm sure, interesting to them. Sure, if it's of interest, uh, happy to talk about. So our incubator is called the Mediapreneur. Um, and uh, we have now, the, the first batch started last year in June. We have seven startups in our incubator. Uh, we give a bit of seed money, about 50, up to 50,000 Singapore dollars. Uh, but the, the real value we think we bring is for one year, you'll be working with uh, MediaCorp and MediaCorp business units, MediaCorp IP, uh, MediaCorp talents. Uh, so if some of the game developers are interested uh, in developing a, a game around some IP from MediaCorp, then please reach out uh, to, to us. And the idea for us is really about how can we nurture innovation through this incubator, because we are a 75-year-old company, uh, and we need to push innovation in different ways. So that's why we started the incubator. Fantastic. I'm sure a lot of them would have one question. Uh, uh, do they have to be based in Singapore, or is it okay if they are still in Thailand? So we, we have people from uh, not all over the world, but we have people from France, Germany, China in our incubator. Uh, the only thing we ask is uh, they need to register the company in Singapore Fair for enough. investment purpose, and you need to be based during that one year uh, in, uh, in Singapore in our uh, premises. Okay, cool. Okay, Manish. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Manish and I'm currently working with Leadbold. So Leadbold is uh, uh, it's one of the very old publishing, you can say the ad network company. Uh, we are in the business for the past uh, one decade and uh, I predominantly take care of India and Southeast Asia. Thank you. Okay, so, so let's start and uh, understand uh, how people have been making money in this part of the world. But before that, uh, I'll just take some time to at least introduce 
some of the ad units which you all know, but I'm going to take liberty of still talking about it. So before that, uh, I'm, I'm hoping the panelists will support me in uh, explaining why should someone use uh, banner ads. Yeah, sure. Right, so uh, who wants to take the bull? Yeah, why should someone use banner ad? Why did I start? So, uh, you know, Nimit, uh, there are a lot of ad units in, uh, in the applications. But uh, they say that, you know, Banner is very easy in terms of integration. Uh, if I'm a developer, I say it's very easy. Let me start with Banner. I can show Banner in every three second, two second, and just uh, skip if some, something and then go, go in the another page. So let me use Banners because it's very easy in terms of integration, and it gives you a lot of click-throughs. Uh, that was a past uh, journey. I'm sure there will be a lot many who can contradict and say that Banner can't generate uh, CTRs. So I think it can generate, but the thing is that it's not only about two and three seconds. It can be for like a whole time. I mean, you can create a banner in an app and it can be like that. So like, you know like what I mean, like uh, you can say that. Sure, sure. So you, so you sure. favor banners? I'm not favoring oh, at you're all. Not Come favoring on, banner. I'm not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Sean, you want to? So uh, you know, for Fungal, we focus exclusively on video, video right? Yeah. So I, th I don't think it's a, a question of banner or video or one unit over the other, you should really have a mix of everything, right? Sure. Um, for us, we ex focus exclusively on video. For some placements, it makes sense to use banner. Um, you're going to get volume with banner impressions. For video, you might not have as much volume with video, but you're going to get the higher CPMs. You're going to get uh, the higher payouts with video. And that's our thesis on it. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because uh, for us, MediaCorp, we went through that journey that you described, right? Because as a traditional media, the instinct was to say, yeah, we are going to use banner ads because that's straightforward and we know how to do it, right? And then we realized, as Sean is saying, that actually you need to adapt uh, the type of advertising to the type of ads and to the type of audience, right? I like when Jayesh was presenting the different type, right? Because to me, that's the, the, the main point here is that you need to adapt to audience and the type of ad app. And one comment on this is that you have to really look at the type of app that you're building, right? So for, uh, for gaming apps, for instance, right, which is a lot of the type of uh, apps that we account as customers, um, you really have to care about the user experience, right? The UX is so sure. important in what the game is. And banner ads, quite frankly, they, they annoy the hell out of people, right? Uh, if you have a video ad that makes sense, that's integrated, that, that flows with the game, that makes it so that the user wants to keep playing, I think that's incredibly important. So that's where video really, for us, goes strongly. But it, it, sorry, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but in ahead. gaming, I think what is, uh, what is interesting, you also want to keep uh, the people there, right? And I, 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 was reading, uh, I was reading before coming, right? And I saw this term, they talk about bribery, right? When you are actually asking people to watch a video to, get, to gain more XP, to gain more coins, and so on, right? And you're absolutely right, right? For, for gaming, uh, it makes sense, right? Now, if you are in a publishing type of app, then you might prefer to go for native advertising uh, or, 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 or video role and so on, right? So really, that adaptation is, is critical. Sure, but, uh, uh, but personally, what I think is uh, banners are very important to be in the, in the monetization strategy. But what's important is the placement, right? Like a lot of time when I see a game where in the game play, when I'm playing a game, there's a banner flashing. And that's something as a player, okay, disturbing me. So, uh, so I believe all of us need to understand that banners are important, but of obviously placements are also super important. Uh, you want to add something, Manish? Yeah, that's fine. It just I was just thinking about because uh, we started talking about banner. We can talk about okay later on the interstitials comes and videos comes, but uh, no doubt placing is more important. It's a vital role. But uh, if you really think that. We started with banner, right? So most of the player, like developers, they, like, they lack you know, like a kind of a technology that how they put interstitials, how they put video. So what I personally like, I have a lot of you know uh, uh, Chinese publishers they're working with me, and uh, even like Indian games and all. And uh, like I was talking to one of them, I guess last week, and he have around. Uh, I think 15,000, you know, like uh, daily, like visitors, and he just run only banners. 
And he was like, you're saying, I don't know how to put interstitials, I don't know how to put video. I mean, this is a challenge actually what they felt. No, but this is one of the case. If, if today you find a developer who says he doesn't know how to do it, then I think he's in the wrong business because today almost every developer yeah, that's right, right. understands the right monetization tool that should be used. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll now move a little faster because sure. uh, uh, I also want to touch on uh, the other ad unit which people use is uh, interstitial, interstitial. Uh, which, uh, which I believe is, is a fantastic ad unit again. It actually gives good amount of uh, eCPM and also the advertisers are always happy with the kind of CTRs that they get uh, on interstitial. But would like to hear your comments uh, and your thoughts also. And we'll go to offer wall, we'll go to video, but I think what I want to do main here is touch each and every advertising unit available so that you understand which is the right one that you need to use for your own game or app. Sure, I completely agree with your last point, Nimit, where you said that you know placement is the key. So if you say that banner is important, I agree that banner is an important uh, placement, but also interstitial is a key role, uh, which actually mixed up with the video, as Sean said. But you know, video sometimes is intrusive in terms of uh, user's uh, behavior, user experience, because it's a 25 second video or something. So sure. if you have an interstitial and you intelligently place it, uh, where you thought to have video, you can make it on a rewarded place, where on the non-rewarded side, you can think of placing an interstitial. I'm sure it actually changes the complete game of your app. Uh, then there are, there are developers who think that, let me place 20 banners in an app. Instead of placing 20 banners in an app, he can actually place 10 and put two, three strategically, you know, very nicely placed interstitials which can give him very nice, attractive CTRs and can generate very high monetization for him. So once again, what you're saying is placements? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, let's hear it from. So as far as interstitial goes, uh, again, I'm speaking about video, but uh, rewarded video interstitials for us, for instance, is an excellent placement for us. Um, you know, for a casual game, for instance, where there's different levels and there are natural breakpoints in a game or a natural breakpoint uh, in an app if it's not a game, uh, these are the ones that perform very, very well. And so, it, it again, it goes back to the theme of user experience, right? You can play through a level, you could play five minutes of a level, and uh, there won't be an ad, right? It won't be any sort of intrusive, intrusive experience. Sure. And then you get a, um, a, a break point in the app where you, you, you're willing to watch like a 30 second uh, or more ad, which is a huge deal for monetization. We found that you know, a 30 second ad is gonna convert 60% better than a 15 second ad, and that's huge. The, the, any, any incremental increase in, in the conversion rate is a, is a huge uh, cash, uh, I mean, uh, uh, those, are those, those are cash gains that you're getting for those conversion gains. Sure, Sachi. Well, actually, I, I, I agree with the idea of placement because for me, as a, as a, I am a gamer too, and sometimes I get so impatient to get to the next level, and then you have this interstitial coming up, and, and you don't want that, right? And so it's all about my experience, and it's all about understanding who I am as a gamer or who I am as a user. I mean, now you have more and more data points so that you can adapt uh, your, your advertising strategy not just to the app, but to the users, right? Because I don't think one size fits all. You may like uh, to have interstitial, I may not, right? Sure, sure. So, uh, interstitials, I think uh, we have already covered about the placement and now I would like to add a point as a developer. Uh, let's say if we decide something, like every five, if, every, if somebody is actually crossing every level five or level 10 or level 15, this is where we have to put some interstitials. Now again, a guy like developer can do a kind of a big data analysis. They can find out okay what kind of like you know pub, like people we have like what is the age group, what is the area, and based on that they can decide what kind of advertisement and all they can put into that. So the conversion will go higher. So I really think that that plays a very vital role. So in it's that. all about smartly putting up exactly, uh, I mean, yeah. interstitial and optimizing it for revenue. Exactly. That's okay. Right. Now let me touch the video advertising part. I think that's what I and Sean as a business we do. Uh, and uh, obviously we do rewarded video ads, but uh, I would also request to touch upon the non-rewarded video ad segment also. So Sean, what do you think? Uh, why should someone put rewarded video ads? Go ahead with your Wungle pitch. Sure, well, 
you know, video ads, I think, are the best way to increase. For us, we, we've, uh, we're working with both sides of the business, right? Advertisers and uh, developers who want to monetize their apps. And we found that video, why are we able to get high CPMs? Why are we able to, you know, raise the amount of revenue that we can earn for a developer? Um, I think it comes down to, uh, down to LTV of users. Um, so what I mean by that is we're working with our advertisers, right, to uh, to find the best types of users for their for their particular apps. Sure. So other games advertising in other games, or perhaps an e-commerce site uh, advertising in games, whatever it might be. Um, and those, you know, if we can prove that the users that uh, that we're getting for our advertisers are really valuable, or high ROI, right, um, we're going to be able to get our CPMs through the roof. We're able to get revenue for our um, for our apps for our uh, publishers that uh, that just isn't comparable, right? So it, it's all kind of a virtuous cycle, um, both on the advertiser side as and well the as publisher the publisher side, right? But yeah. video is the one that is going to be engaging the most. And yeah, and users. and if I can also add, I yeah. think I think one of the uh, also advantage of using video advertising uh, in the reward space sure. is there's no ad when the player is actually playing the game; mm -hmm. it's always opt-in, right? Yeah. Right. So the user decides if he wants to watch the ad. Mm -hmm. So there's never going to be a complaint that there are so many ads in the game. Yep. So I think that's one of the yeah, uh, it's a value very important. Exchange, right? They're getting something out of, out of watching that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you wanna? I would like to add here on a non-rewarded side. Yes, please. So Morfox recently, uh, you know, we are actually working uh, specifically on the US side. We acquired Optimatism as a network over there. And uh, we figured out we're filling the 100% US inventory for video for a non-rewarded space. And it actually generating very high eCPM for a publisher. It is not actually, you know, a publisher needs to, app developer needs to decide where the placement is exactly the way we talked about last. And when they, when they actually put it in a very nice way, it is not actually hampering the user experience and in turn generating very high eCPMs. So, so non-rewarded is actually on the another ad unit which users need to actually check and see whether developers can put it or not. And uh, I'm sure it, it, it's, it's going to sure. be a good uh, piece in terms of monetization. Yeah, I, would, I would agree to disagree uh, purely because what you, what you stated as an example of the US, right? Uh, but considering the connectivity and all the data charges that are applicable, uh, I'm not sure if you can cache a, uh, cache a non-rewarded video and it has to be live streamed. So a uh, lot, of, lot of developers do have a problem with that because the internet speed is not, not consistent. Correct, correct. So, yeah. so do you really think it is good so in this part of the world? Actually, you know, uh, an ad unit can be strategically placed for a geo-wise customer. So if I say that I have uh, customers from English-speaking geos, I can use non-rewarded videos. And for the customers, for I know that my base is actually coming from India, Southeast Asia, where the bandwidth is actually low, I can have non-rewarded section. So, you know, the placement needs to be decided based on the geos of the traffic that you're getting. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, developers here, but it's not necessary that everybody is having, you know, customers from only India and Southeast sure, Asia. Sure, sure. So if they are generating customers from English-speaking countries, I'm sure non-rewarded videos can be a very good option for them. They should think about it. Sure. So, so between reward and non-reward, one of the thing is uh, in non-reward there's going to be buffering, streaming, as as compared to reward where there's not going to be buffering. It's going to be pre-cached, right? So, uh, Sean, you want to add on something before I? Yeah. I mean, so we're touching a lot on localized ads, is what we're talking about, yes. right? Yes. Uh, and I think it 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 ranges. It varies country to country, right? So for for Vungle, for instance, we pre-cache all of our video ads, right? Um, certain countries are going to need pre-caching more than other other countries, right? We're talking about data. Uh, we're talking about different uh, different thing, different requirements for different countries, right? I think that uh, another key thing that you need to find in a partner is a partner that really understands how to localize the ads that they play, right? Yes. You don't want uh, ads uh, that are in English for a country where no one speaks English, yes. right? So that is something that you just have to, and brand safety is another thing that you have to, sh be, to be able to understand as well. You can't be showing ads that are, that are not going to be acceptable to the, the users that, you, uh, that are playing a particular app. So those are all considerations as well. Sure. So I have a question which I'll take it up after I hear sure. your thoughts. Sure. 
<clears throat> no, I think, uh, first of all, I, I, maybe it's a bit skewed because I, I, I live in Singapore where you, this bandwidth yeah. issue doesn't, yeah. doesn't exist. Uh, but I, I also think that most of the countries in the region are, are, are picking up quite quickly, right? So I think that that will disappear uh, sooner than maybe we, we think, right? Uh, the other thing is uh, we haven't talked about native ad and video yes. yeah. is, is, is a great way for native ad, right? And mm -hmm. for us... Uh, media company, traditional media, used to the 30 seconds TV commercial. I mean, native app is, is very important uh, yes. because we think that pre-roll difficult because people just want to skip. But native app is something that we really think uh, there is some future uh, in, in mobile apps. Okay. Manish, you want to add? Before I throw another question. Yeah, I, I think we have covered most of the thing and, and uh, we, we talk about skippable and non-skippable ads, which is also one of the part of Yes. You know these videos, yes. and uh, only one more point I would like to add on over here. Like uh, you know, what I personally felt like uh, I see a lot of games inside. They have a you know like a video for games. Rather, they can even try the big brands like you know it's a niche media like let's say Holix or Bombay or something like that. No, I'm just giving Pocket an does that. So Pocket <laughs> does that. I know that very well. So that makes a lot of money for the you know like publishers. Sure, that's, that's it. Sure. So. Uh, do you, do you guys also think it's, it's very important for the developer to select an uh, ad partner depending on the traffic that he has? Like, I meet a lot of people and they just say, okay, we're putting X network and they don't even know whether that X network is really good in that part of the world or not. So, is it very important to select the right partners for each country or each region? Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, I think that diversifying as well your source of uh, of the type of partners you have to monetize your app is really important um, depending it all on one particular partner it can be it can be scary uh, to be to be perfectly honest right so uh, working with a variety of ad partners that you trust and you know speaking to everyone else in the community that uh, the, the app developer community of who who different people trust and who different uh, you know third parties have said that this is a this is a legit ad network to work with or a, a, a great partner to work with, I think it's important. Yeah, and, and I'm sure we all agree, it is also important to have multiple ad partners for the same ad unit, which ensures that there's a high fill rate that they get mm -hmm. and because of which high revenue that they make from there. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you, you want to yeah, no, that, that's uh, exactly what we do. Uh, I, I was checking before coming. I think we have seven or eight uh, ad networks that we are using. And then the idea is really the optimization. How can you optimize uh, your traffic, the, the ROI, and so on, right? So absolutely, yes. Sure. How about you? So uh, I feel that choosing so many networks is the key. But optimization between the networks is another key. So if you choose multiple partners, but you put optimization where you can put the flow rates and you can actually choose different networks for different ad units, it's going to give you very high fill rates with, with you know, a very good eCPMs. So it, so it is like a mediation plus optimization. Yeah, so but sorry to cut you, but uh, what you're saying is typically when you're a big developer or a big publisher, but what happens when you're an indie or a small developer Obviously, they don't have to do so much of mediation or optimization. So it's because not for not only for a big developer; it can also work for a smaller developer okay. as well. Because uh, you know, although it is small, uh, but his traffic can be from anywhere. Uh, because it's not restricted that the traffic is only from Thailand; it can be from worldwide regions. So okay. if you have traffic globally and you see that uh, you're generating good impressions. I think you should use some optimization platforms which can actually help you optimize your inventory and then g get maximum full rates and eCPMs together. Sure. Uh, you want to add, Sean, because I think we have two and a half minutes left. Yeah, so. just one quick thing is that I would recommend that uh, uh, you, 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 be, you, you think really hard about the, the, the order of the ad networks that you choose for the particular views in your particular app, right? Um, I would say that the first uh, two or three ads that a particular user has shown should probably be going to a performance advertiser. Those sure. are the ones that are going to convert the highest, right? Yeah. And then the rest, you got to think about, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a performance advertiser, it could be a CPM ad, um, but those first three views are the really important ones, I think. Sure. So, uh, since we are, we are running out of time, let me first ask, uh, any questions, please? Does anyone have any question to ask to the panelist? 
Come on, guys. It's all about money. Ask. Maybe they would like to talk about incubators later on. <laughs> They'll be behind him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Innovations and investments. <laughs> okay. But uh, before, so so let me just try and summarize this. Uh, uh, so I'm going to ask each of you a very. Uh, I want I want you to rank from a revenue point of view. Uh, banner, interstitial, video, off a wall. Which one is number one in revenue to the least? Video. It's a very tricky question. It's a very <laughs> tricky question. Be careful. I'm, I'm very careful. I'm, I'm, I yes. can say like instantly. Video, interstitial, off a wall, banner. Finish. Okay, so you give interstitial number two and off a wall number three. I'm giving it. Okay, Tab Joy, are you around? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, Richard. What do you think? No, actually, I, <coughs> based on what I say, I can't rank, right? Because my point here is really that one, you need to adapt to the type of app, right? Sure. And two, you need to adapt to the audience, right? So having a ranking, to me, uh, probably not, not relevant. Still. Still, I, I, I am really keen to hear your thoughts. You just can't get away with that. Come on. You need to give ranking. Oh, so I, I will, uh, then I will put video because I come from the video world. Uh, I will put video first. Video first. And no two, three, four, you want to keep it open? Keep it open. <laughs> okay. And Sean, okay, video is first. One for me. It's video one, video two, video three, and video four. So. <laughs> no, okay, so let me, let me ask you in a different way. Sure. Uh, in video, reward, non-reward. What is number one? I would say that rewarded video probably is number one. Reward video is number one? That's right. Okay. So, as he said, you know, I agree with him. It is actually difficult to give the numbers, you know, in terms of... Uh, as I said, it is actually a game of placement and the uses. So, you sure. actually can't say. But for a developer, if he says, uh, I'm sure he's getting highest eCPMs with videos only. So video comes on top. Uh, especially, I, I, I say that rewarded, apart from rewarded video, non-rewarded can also generate good eCPMs. Sure. So I agree that non-rewarded can go to number one. And... Uh, we need to talk on that. Yeah. <laughs> but rewarded is also good. I'm not denying. Sure. But, you know... Uh, Non-rewarded is also a very good ad unit uh, if the placement is actually put nicely. So video, and then I'm sure uh, now native is also coming. So native is also on top with video. Yes. And then uh, interstitials and then banner. Uh, so you know this is how the rating should go. Sure. So uh, so thank you, thank you, uh, panelists. Uh, thank you, audience, for being uh, so nice to listen to them, but. Not asking questions is not good. It's all about money. Please do ask them questions uh, when they move out of the stage. But uh, I would just like to also add, uh, there is a lot of research that's happening and uh, almost everyone across all research is saying 2016 is all about videos. So, uh, you know, guys, use, uh, use the right ad unit, which is important for your game, but use the right ad unit. It's not about video or banner or interstitial, but whatever is the best for your game or app. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists for speaking to us on monetization. And I would like to invite to the stage Sentil from Jimasa to present the tokens of appreciation and to take a selfie with our panelists, Farheen Bandili from Mobfox, Guillaume Sache from MediaCore, Manish Giri from uh, Lead Bolton, uh, Nimit Panpalia from Pocket and Sean Zhu from Vangal.